What's going on there, folks? Good evening. It's the Earth Master here on this Monday night, November 21st, 2022. It's about 9.44 p.m. California time here along the West Coast. And uh, looking at the uh, latest earthquake, a 1.3 over here in Alaska. Seeing quite a bit of deep movement uh, up there around that uh, beautiful state. Also some large-scale activity kicking up around the Solomon Islands earlier and also some deep movement quakes once again ramping up back around the Fiji area. Uh, if you notice here on the globe there's a uh, super deep earthquake up here outside of the Switzerland area and this earthquake here is uh, 750 kilometers deep for a 3.6. Now I'm uncertain on if this is actually a legit earthquake or not um, far as the parameters go, uh, when I go to the France uh, parameter site where this uh, information is coming from, I, I cannot actually, I can't find that earthquake on there. And I did a, a little search of the catalog uh, for this earthquake and it's just not up here anywhere. So I'm not for sure why it's still being listed on the EMSC model. Um, but not here on the actual uh, Switzerland site. But I did uh, I did double check uh, a bunch of these. There's a, a couple different. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's so it's uh, beyond the 350 kilometer range here. But uh, I'm kind of watching it, seeing how this uh, plays out. Uh, either way, if that is a legit earthquake there, 3.6 underneath sw uh, Switzerland at 750 kilometers deep, that would uh, have to be one of the most deepest ones I have ever seen um, in this area and technically around the uh, globe. So I will keep an eye on it um, and see how it plays out. It's still listed on here. It came in about um, three hours ago. So, um, yeah, just kind of a, an interesting and odd quake at the same time there. So I'll watch this and see if it does uh, disappear and go through some of these sites here that are in, of course, different languages. I'll have to translate them and see what's going on. But either way, very odd quake uh, out there. And again, a lot of times these bigger earthquakes here send seismic waves across. Uh, and I just mentioned it too in my previous update. These bigger earthquakes tend to send seismic waves around the globe uh, through the earth and sometimes these uh, seismograms in certain areas pick up a wave and the seismograph station itself may think it's a deep movement earthquake that's why it's not registering hard on the uh, on the graph there, there's all sorts of uh, technical issues that could come about from these seismic waves and most of them are tuned pretty properly to uh, ignore the large earthquakes you know the seismic waves that they make and just focus on um, the localized activity so I'm not completely uh, kind of up in the air on 50 50 on if that's a legit earthquake over there or not uh, underneath Swiss Switzerland okay so there was earthquake activity here around the Solomon Islands shaking things up. Uh, originally came in as a 7.3. It looks like it did get downgraded here to a 7.0 by the USGS. And there is a little statement out here from the USGS in regards to the, uh, the general plate dynamics here. Uh, looks like this occurred as a result of shallow normal faulting near the convergent plate boundary between the uh, Australia and the Pacific plates. Uh, and it looks like this area... Uh, the Australia plate moves east northeast, east northeast at a velocity of 97 mm per year relative to the Pacific plate, uh, which is subducting there at the Solomon Trench. So that's that's a pretty high slip right there, incredible, incredibly high, and that's why they see quite a bit of earthquake activity there in the region. Uh, the Solomon Islands arc experiences a very high level of earthquake activity. Uh, there has been 16 other earthquakes, 6.5 and larger within 250 kilometers of this event since 2000. So uh, definitely a major seismically hazardous zone here. We know all about this area. This whole area sees quite a bit. 
Um, so what do we have for aftershock activity? So far we've seen a 6.0, a 5.1, and a 4.7. Uh, sometimes these areas can see some larger earthquakes, but for now, just a 7.0 in that area. I shouldn't say just a 7.0 because it did trigger a tsunami threat with a very minimal um, adjustments on the buoys. Uh, it did trigger three buoys out here across the region, but the adjustments there on the water column height was just very, very minimal. Um, so... But that's good that they put out a tsunami threat notification right off the bat as soon as that earthquake hit. Definitely good to um, be on the up and go in that type of event. So looking back here, we got a, another earthquake here, 5.0, into the Fiji Islands area, 550 kilometers deep. Um, and that's, that's an area that has seen some tremendously deep earthquake activity. Um, that's a lot. I mean, we can go back here over the last seven days and see that this area is just flooded with some incredible movement uh, throughout this area, unlike I've ever seen in in uh, in recent months. Maybe it's been over a week here. We'd have to go the last 30 days, and uh, we can definitely pull that up here. Look at that, all that. Uh, seen quite a few earthquakes out here in the large magnitude as well, including three seven-pointers. Basically, within days of each other and that's almost unheard of and not to mention days within the, within each other but within the same location so there was a tremendous amount of deep movement subsequent shallow earthquake activity up here around Tonga and very minor very minor adjustment here around the Kermadec Trench I still think this area uh, has the potential of seeing some adjustment um, you can't just have all of this activity up here with with uh, just very minimal adjustment there. So I think something's, uh, something should be uh, hitting this area around New Zealand and potentially the Kermadec Trench area soon. Uh, further west, let's see what we got following that seven pointer. I like to look at areas around the globe, around the Pacific plate uh, and how they adjust to these large earthquakes. And um, we haven't really seen a whole lot of uptick further west here. Uh, all this activity around the Indonesia area, of course, that was from last night, the pretty um, uh, powerful earthquake there around the Indonesia, Java region. Uh, the earthquake down here in Australia from uh, early this morning. So we haven't really seen a whole lot of pressure here to the west uh, following that seven pointer, but readjustment over here. So man, definitely got to watch it um, up here. Into the Kurokam Chaka Trench, it looks like this activity earlier this afternoon. A um, couple fours and some fives up here. Uh, all of that is prior to the seven pointer, so no further adjustment up here or around the Mariana Trench. It's actually gone completely quiet uh, within these regions. Let me check here on the EMSC globe here um, because the USGS, USGS has been relatively slow uh, in terms of keeping up with the magnitudes out here. Looks like down here south of the Philippines, uh, along the Philippine Trench, a somewhat deep 4.8 there. A uh, fairly recent earthquake that's um, into this area right here, not showing up. Uh, and that's, you know, I, <laughs> goodness. <laughs> I like to depend on the USGS, but sometimes they just, they're just a little on the slow side. It's Monday, and uh, then again, this earthquake looks like it just came in. Yeah, it's been almost an hour. 4.8 here at, uh, let's see how deep it is, 138 kilometers deep. Has not yet been reviewed by a seismologist, so hopefully it will be. And then get added onto the USGS. So if that is a legit earthquake, uh, then we uh, definitely seen a little bit of adjustment further uh, west, northwestward of that large seven-pointer there in the Solomon Islands. And that could be a key um earthquake there to watch this region around the Mariana Trench and northward through the uh, Kuril Kamchaka Trench. Over here around Afghanistan, uh, let's see if we got any uh, adjustment going on here. Uh, looks like one earthquake over here, 4.3 relatively shallow and a 4.5 there in China around the Himalayas, north of the Himalayas at 84 kilometers deep. A couple earthquakes uh, following that movement uh, earlier uh, this evening. A 
Yep, that's my dog again. Uh, <laughs> Mid-Atlantic Ridge. This earthquake, surprisingly, struck right after, um, I would say probably a, a couple minutes right after the seven-pointer in Solomon Islands over here around the Mid-Atlantic Ridge. Um, just literally minutes after that seven-pointer uh, divergent boundary earthquake. Uh, so things may be starting to kick up here in this area as well. Uh, West Coast, let's see if anything's been adjusted out here or picked up. Um, along the Cascadia subduction zone, I'm not really seeing anything new. Um, let's see, some of these are from uh, this morning, the 5.2 and a 2.9 off the coast of Oregon. The West Coast here, California, kind of quiet. Um, I know there's some earthquake activity out here, but it's not... Uh, a lot of it's some older movement and some very small microquakes up and down our typical zones. Uh, no unusual activity across the area of California now. A 2.2 explosion there outside of Bend, Oregon. That's somewhat of a larger um, explosion. Mount Hood showing a little bit of activity, but not quite as much as Mount Rainier. Mount Rainier has been on the, um, on the chart here today. And uh, I want to pull up. Let me pull up the trimmer map here for tonight, which is 80 epicenters in the Northern California. Uh, I wanna check out the Mount Rainier volcanic seismicity map here. And there's those earthquakes showing up even on the PNSN network around the Northeastern flank here of Mount Rainier. So we're gonna check out this local seismograph station and see if we got anything uh, on the uptick in terms of earthquake activity here at Mount Rainier. Uh, definitely still some microquake activity. Notice these spikes here uh, over the last few hours, but I'm not seeing anything as large as what we had seen earlier uh, in terms of those quakes showing up there on the USGS and the PNSN network. Uh, and there was quite a few of them there for a little bit. I think the largest one was a 2.2. Uh, but as you notice here across the board, this area has been seeing a lot of swarming. These are some very small microquakes, but if we go back days and days and days, there's lots of them. We've had days of these little earthquakes here, very small ones, um, but they, they've been continuous for a little while. Look at that. This is some type of uh, error, some type of something turning on, it seems like every day, uh, it may be who knows what, but it's not earthquake activity. But uh, just kind of pointing out here the days pass of all these little microquakes uh, kicking up around the Mount Rainier area. And it seems as though uh, they're kind of getting a little bit larger. So we will watch that area around Mount Rainier pretty closely. Uh, see if there's any more activity ramping up uh, overnight and tomorrow. 2.1 again was the largest earthquake just outside of the Mount Rainier summit area. Uh, Yellowstone National Park, some activity throughout the last 24 hours. Uh, looks like about 11 earthquakes or so listed up on the map. I do want to go check this out real quick and see what we got for the latest data from the University of Utah. And uh, one seismograph station up here will just kind of give us a good indicator of what's going on. These are going to be the um, earthquakes uh, off the coast of Oregon this morning and also a 5.4 into the Aleutian Trench area. That was kind of kicking off earlier uh, this morning time frame. So throughout the afternoon time frame, looks like uh, just some small microquakes. This here, that signature, is going to be the seven pointer in the Solomon Islands area. Pretty significant signature across the graph and followed up by some uh, quite a few waves. So local, local activity there at Yellowstone, uh, somewhat minimal right now. Uh, let's see what else we got. Texas. Oklahoma doesn't look like anything's kicked up here. Uh, we did have one earthquake out in the New Madrid zone late last night. And that's about it, though. Uh, not a whole lot going on throughout the eastern portion of the country. Outside of the Ottawa area, looks like one earthquake earlier this morning as well. 3-3-3. Three, three, three. Hmm, 2.2. 2. Right smack dab on the, uh, wow, right on the border. Let's see, not a whole lot going on throughout the Caribbean or the South America region. Uh, let's go back to the EMSC model globe here and see if we're missing anything. Um, New Zealand area did see a couple threes kicking up here and it looks like um, some of that activity 
3.9 and a couple other threes around the South Island area followed uh, the seven pointer. Now, whoever, I'm not for sure why there's still a 7.5 on here. Let's see what we got. Not for sure why. But yeah, one of the agencies there is still showing a 7.5 uh, for one of the magnitudes there on that uh, Solomon Islands quake. Sometimes it takes them a little bit to readjust and then uh, show up on the globe. Uh, a little bit of activity there in eastern Afghanistan is noted. And there's that super deep earthquake. Again, I'm kind of curious to see if this is going to be a real one or not. Because um, I remember a couple years back here, um, we had a similar, somewhat of a larger earthquake. Uh, and then just within about half an hour, we seen a super deep earthquake here in South America. It was like 680 kilometers deep. I've never seen one deep up here uh, in South America. And it ended up just being a false alarm, uh, just a seismic wave that uh, one of the seismograph stations thought was a localized earthquake that was just deep. Uh, but in any case, it wasn't even an earthquake, just a, um, just a false reading. So uh, we'll see if this gets um, looked at by uh, you know a uh, seismologist there overnight. Uh, up north around the Iceland area, I got a couple, looks like some twos and threes kicking up here. In that region, uh, let's see, South America is showing a little bit of activity, but definitely below the 4.0 uh, threshold. It looks like there was one 4.5 that's a little bit older. And into the Middle America Trench showing some activity as well. So, like I say, I like to look and see where exactly uh, certain areas may be showing unrest following a large earthquake. And right now, man, these quiet zones, I can't help but think... Uh, this is definitely uh, looking like it could be hit next. Uh, we'll definitely watch that pretty closely. There's the, uh, yeah, it took him a little bit, 4.7 uh, into the Philippine Trench there, 127 kilometers deep, southern end, Indonesia area. It's a pretty deep earthquake. So, again, these deeper movement quakes do add quite a bit of strain back at the subduction levels. So, we'll watch that closely see what's happened with Hawaii all in the mix here got one earthquake within the last hour a 1.9 a very shallow earthquake up at the summit around Mauna Loa uh, 1.1 kilometers deep and uh, looks like there was a 2.9 earlier and some other scattered earthquakes out here but nothing major going on yet far as any movement below goes uh, let's see what else is there. Solar ham site. Uh, yep, see, never really seen that G1 s storm or even close to it. Uh, pretty much missed us there completely. Looks like uh, going green across the board here. Not expecting any major solar weather events here in the future. Uh, unless, in the near future, I should say. Unless one of these sunspots here become... Uh, unstable and produce a significant flare but at the moment these are not looking likely um, they're pretty massive and they're they are facing earth but they're not set up here uh, for instability with some uh, solar flares so 65 percent chance for a c flare 15 percent chance for an m flare one percent or less for x and that's uh that's just how it is right now not looking at anything major coming on all right, folks, have a good night. I'm going to call it a night here and uh, go see what my dog's howling at. Probably howling at the moon. I don't know. No, it shouldn't see the moon right now. We got uh, very close to a new moon. So, all right, guys, have a good night. Stay safe out there. And um, again, I will uh, I'll report back on this earthquake tomorrow if I can find anything. Unless somebody else has some info out there, too, drop it in the, uh, the comments. Um... Like I say, it's just kind of an odd earthquake, and it's extremely deep. I mean, 750 kilometers, and uh, I don't know. Who knows? It may be even more than that. All right, guys. Have a good night. We'll catch you guys a little bit later tomorrow sometime. Peace out.